Hello, hello, testing, testing, attention please. One, two, three. I got a mic. This is legit. All right, hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while. There's been a lot going on in my life over the past month and a half, two months. It's just been uh, weird. I haven't been in a place to want to talk about what's going on. I haven't been in a place to want to ignore what's going on and like make videos about church stuff. I just haven't felt ready, but I'm ready. And that is because I've kind of been keeping Instagram up to date in the past week. And I feel like it's time to come on here and get you guys up to date and just get it out there. So today's video is gonna be like a catch up with me. We're gonna answer some questions and talk about what's going on. What does my life look like now? Where am I in regards to my faith, religion, what church I go to? how I feel about the Mormon church, the way I live my life, the things I believe or don't believe, how I practice things, my relationship with CJ, divorce. It's a lot of information. It's, it's a lot. So first thing I will do is give you some background again, just on the timeline of things. If you remember back at the beginning of the year, I was in a really, really bad place in my marriage. We were going to therapy. We were working on stuff because I had struggled last year with um, feelings I had developed for another man, a person who had been in my life for a long time. That caught me off guard. I wasn't anticipating any of that happening, but it did. And I worked through it. I told CJ about it. I was honest. I met with the bishop. I went through a sort of repentance process, got my temple recommend back, started going to therapy with CJ, tried to really overcome his issues, he had made um, some really bad mistakes in regards to his addiction with pornography and infidelity, talking to other women and whatnot. So there was a lot for us to overcome. By like March of this year, we were better than ever. Setting boundaries, communicating, understanding each other's attachment styles and trauma, in therapy, reading books, creating schedules, doing so much to get us on a good page. CJ said he wanted to have another baby. He felt like that was right for us. So we were planning our future together of when we were gonna have another baby this year, planned a big Disney World trip. Things were going really well by March, right? The year started off rocky, but a couple months in, things were amazing. Then at the end of March, I started looking into church history. You guys know that story. If you don't know it, you can watch my Mormon Stories interview or watch my video that I put out about why I left the church for good. So come April, CJ and I were in a very rocky place because I just shattered his world by telling him I don't believe in the church anymore. Now I will make a whole video talking about how to like come out to your friends and family and loved ones because I know that's like a terrifying thing. and People wanna know how did I tell people? So I will make a separate video about coming out. but. I told him, I sort of told his family on Easter, and things started like downward spiraling from there very, very quickly. CJ was getting pressure to make a decision about if he was gonna put up with this or how he was gonna handle this. He was feeling very conflicted about whether he could deal with a mixed faith marriage or not, which then led to uncertainty for him about having a baby or not because he didn't want to bring more kids into a family that was already going to be pretty messy now with the mixed faith thing. He didn't want me to be doing a disservice to our children by bringing them into a family with parents who don't agree on things and one parent, the mom, who they'd be with all the time, teaching them contrary things to the one true covenant path. So all of April was very up and down. CJ and I discussed separation several times, but overall he had spiritual experiences that he relied on that yes, we are supposed to have another baby and yes, we are supposed to be together. And he just clung to that and tried to have faith. But by the first week of May, he could not cling to those anymore. I can't speak for him, I guess, but he didn't feel confident anymore in our future. Regardless of the spiritual experiences he had had, he did not know how to make a mixed faith marriage work, how to have another baby or how to stay with me and not have another baby and deal with breaking my heart about that. Um, and so we ultimately did agree to separate. 
I said, you know, I need someone who's fully committed to me. I can't be with you and treat you like my husband and love you and be affectionate with you and have sex with you and act normal with you and have fun with you if you don't even know if we have a future. You need to decide that. He had said that it's not that he wants to be with someone else. It's that he would rather be single than deal with the difficulties of being married. I said, all right, then go figure out what it's like to be single. So we separated at the very beginning of May. So yes, when I went out to Utah and filmed my Mormon Stories video, CJ and I were separated. That's why it was really emotional for me to talk about that in my interview because everything was so uncertain. Before I left to go to Utah, like middle of May, CJ came to me and told me that he realized it's not about the church, it's not about the baby, it's about his inability to commit to me fully and be faithful to me because he had struggled our entire marriage with not only like pornography and masturbation, but also faithfulness and his desire to be free to flirt with other women and talk to other women and pursue other women. So when he told me that that was the real issue, that he could not commit to me and he was not committed to me, that's when we said, okay, this isn't just a separation. We are going to get divorced. But we both held on to the hope that we would be able to work things out and get back together because this is just, you know, his addiction and his trauma and stuff like that can be healed. That can be worked on. And I was willing. So while I was in Utah, we agreed that we are emotionally divorced and we would stay together for legal reasons, tax reasons, you know, financially, whatever. He started going on dating apps. You know, he took off his wedding ring. I took off mine and I started going on dating apps because I felt like I needed to accept the reality that this might never get better and we might never get back together. I wanted to, I had hoped for that, but I didn't know. So I was kind of just trying to accept that like my marriage is probably over and I'm going to have to find someone else one day. So I was just trying to get used to like getting back out there, right? Like I'm a mom now. The last time I was dating, I was 22 and only dating Mormons, but now I'm not Mormon. I'm 28. I have kids. Like it's a very different world of dating. So I was just trying to like get my feet wet and get back into it. Uh, but it was, it was devastating. Um, knowing that CJ was talking to girls and going out with girls. Every time I went on a date, I came home crying and said like, I don't want to be single. Don't make me be single. But CJ uh, stood still strong in his conviction that he could not come home. He could not commit to me. He could not be faithful to me. He could not be honest with me. If he tried to come home and be married to me, he would just be lying and sneaky and deceitful. And he didn't want to do that. So that's a good thing. <laughs> I had filed for divorce or got the paperwork rolling to submit to the courts. And I decided to cancel it because I felt like CJ was making progress. We were still being intimate in many ways. Um, he was here all the time to see the kids and I still loved him and wanted to be with him and believed in him. And so I canceled the papers and I wasn't really paying attention to dating apps anymore because I was just focused on CJ. And then uh, he backed off and said that he didn't feel like it was fair to the other women he was talking to because they're under the assumption that he's getting divorced. It wasn't fair to me or him to be flirting with me and intimate with me while he's talking to other women. So he felt like we needed to squash that. And so I went back on dating apps and I met someone and I had no plans or desires for things to be serious. Like I wasn't interested in wasting my time. I was only going to talk to someone who I really felt like I was compatible with, but I did not expect uh, to be so compatible and for feelings to develop so quickly. So I told CJ, he asked me like, are you dating this guy? And I said, well, you know, we're still legally married. So no, like we're not like official, but like we're not seeing anyone else besides each other. Like we, I had deleted the apps. He had deleted his apps and whatnot. So yes, we did meet on Bumble. <laughs> CJ asked me if I had kissed the guy and I said, yes, I have. And that was it. CJ like wasn't upset. He, and, um, we discussed it and determined that we did need to go through with the divorce papers because CJ wanted me to have what I deserved. He didn't want to keep me waiting for something that might never happen. And he still felt that he could not commit and he could not come home. I fought for him still, even while I was dating this other guy, you know, I was totally honest with him about what was going on, but I felt like CJ was my husband. Like I had to give him a chance. My heart still belongs to him. I can't 
totally close that door. And so I gave CJ one last chance, <laughs> said, here it is, CJ. I have another man who really wants to be with me, who wants to be in my life, is willing to, at some point, step in and be a husband and be a father to your children. Do you realize you are going to lose me? If you let me go and divorce me, I will get remarried and I will be gone. And he said, I realize that, but I cannot come home. I cannot give you what you need. I cannot commit to you and be honest. I can't. So that was when we went through with the divorce papers, filled them out, signed them, and submitted them to the lawyer. So we are in the process of just waiting for that to be finalized. And in the meantime, you know, I'm, I'm seriously dating someone. And CJ knows it, and they have met and they have been kind and respectful towards each other. By no means did I expect this to happen, to find someone, but he is the exact opposite of CJ in every good way. Not to say that there aren't good things about CJ because of course I was so in love with him, he was my best friend, but everything that was unhealthy and toxic and not good about that relationship, I have in this new relationship. So. I've been dating someone for a little over a month. It is going great. I'll have to make another video about him, but in order to not overwhelm him with the entire YouTube world coming at him, I'm gonna leave that a little bit anonymous, but um, I wasn't expecting it. He's not a rebound. It's something real. So that brings me into like my lifestyle. Like, okay, are you drinking coffee? Are you drinking alcohol? Are you keeping the law of chastity? Like waiting till marriage? What are your thoughts on marriage? Are you gonna get remarried? Are you gonna have more kids? All of those things. Where do I stand with the church? What church am I going to? Is this guy religious? Was he Mormon? All of those things. So I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire answer some of these questions. I um, still love members of the church. I still think there are good things about the church. I am not going to have my records removed. I anticipate at some point probably getting excommunicated but I will not have my records removed. My book was removed from Deseret Book. They no longer sell it. So I'm sure the word will spread and the church will want to cut ties with me. But my kids are still attending Mormon church every other week. Our schedule is every other weekend. So my kids come to church with me. Yes, I go to a non-denominational Christian church in Gilbert and I love it so much. I still completely love Jesus and want to follow him and going to church is the vessel to worship him and to learn about him. By no means is it some organized religion that tells me what to do or I have to pay money or I have to participate in these things. It is literally just a place for me to worship and that's it. So I love it. Love learning from the Bible. I love learning about Jesus and worshiping Jesus and my kids love my church. They have um, like a kid group that they go to their class, their age, the entire time, so they don't, I don't have to worry about them at all. It's very, very safe. They learn a Bible story, like every week, Ireland tells me what she learned, it's so cute. So I do go to Christian church every week. They go to Mormon church with their dad every other week when they're with him. And my boyfriend is Christian. He was not Mormon, never Mormon, but um, I've taught him a little bit about it. We've definitely talked about it. And I'm actually really grateful that he does not come from that Mormon background because I would not want to bond with someone over that. If you listen to my Mormon stories interview, CJ and I had trauma bonding and I don't want to have that again with someone else. I don't want to bond with someone else again about leaving the church. Uh, great for friendships, but I don't want a romantic relationship to be like founded on that. So he's just a Christian and he really believes in Jesus and loves his faith and his church. So... That's great, we're really compatible there. As far as raising the children with religion, you know, CJ will teach them what he wants. If he does FHE or scripture study or prayer with them or whatever is up to him, I still do a prayer with the kids every night and I try to have like a little FHE with them and teach them about Jesus and the Bible. But there is no pressure to get baptized. Luckily, CJ and I agreed on that, that our kids will get baptized in whatever religion they want when they feel ready. I'm sure that by the time like Ireland is eight, you know, when she's in primary, they'll ask her or talk to her about it. But I'm going to be very honest with her about that. CJ will be honest with her about that. And we're not going to pressure our kids either way. We want our kids to commit themselves to Jesus, of course, if they feel that in their heart and that's what they want to do. But we're going to leave that up to them when 
they are really ready. I have drank coffee and tea, but because I like really like sugary, sweet flavored coffee and tea, I try to avoid them because first of all, I don't want to spend the money on those drinks. Second of all, they're just not good for me. I don't need to consume all those calories and stuff. And I just don't feel the need to have that caffeine. So I have drank coffee and tea since I left the church, but it's just like not my thing. Now alcohol, I have drank and I love it, which is really funny because when I started drinking alcohol back in like 2014, I only drank like three or four times and I hated it. I never felt drunk. I just felt like weird in my fingers and like my belly burned. I did not like it. But now that I've had whether the right drinks or I'm guilt free or whatnot, I don't know, but I love drinking. I think it's a really good time. I think drinks are really yummy and it's a lot of fun. Drunk Hallie is really fun. I won't say drunk, but like buzz, tipsy Hallie, whatever. I've never been hungover. I've never thrown up. Pretty impressive, but I'm a lightweight. So what am I gonna teach my kids? I am gonna teach my kids why Mormons believe what they do, and you know, CJ will teach them that as well, I'm sure. But I'll e also teach them why I live my life the way I do. And I'm sure it'll be confusing if my kids are with CJ and CJ says, you can't drink iced tea, but then my kids come home and they're like, mommy, why are you drinking iced tea? Daddy says you can't drink that. And I'll have to tell them. Daddy has different rules than mommy does, just like some Families have different rules than our family does. You know, some families don't say the word stupid. We say the word stupid, it's just like that. You know, when you're with daddy, he has rules. When you're with mommy, we have rules. And they're different and that's okay. And hopefully when they're older, they'll understand the why behind everything. And again, they'll be able to make decisions for themselves. Again, the goal is no pressure, let them decide for themselves. Uh, all right, when it comes to how I feel about like pornography and masturbation and sex and chastity and waiting for marriage, um, I think all of those things are in the Bible, honestly. I feel like it's still wrong and dangerous to do those things. However, I am operating from complete love and grace and forgiveness. No shame, no like punishment of if you don't do these things, then you're gonna be in trouble or you're gonna be punished or God's gonna be disappointed in you. I'm not operating from that at all. I will teach my kids the reasons why and what the Bible says about what to do or not to do, but I will make sure that they always know they are loved and they're good and God loves them and Jesus died for them and forgives them no matter what, but that if we love Jesus, then we want to follow him. It's not that we have to do all these works. It's that because we love him, we want to do these things, knowing we're not going to be perfect at it, knowing we're going to mess up, but we at least try. I still do operate from the mindset of, the Lord loves effort. I really think he does. He knows we're going to fail, but he wants to see that our hearts are turned to him and that we invite Jesus into our lives. So that's where I operate from. Yes, I know Jesus saved me. Yes, I believe in being saved and in grace. I don't think that you can just YOLO your life, eat, drink, and be merry, and do whatever you want. I don't think that's what Jesus wants for us. I think he wants us to follow him and live with him in our hearts and in our everyday moments of our lives. So I will teach that to my kids. I will try to continue to live that way, knowing I will fall short and not be perfect, but that is still my goal and still what I'm going to teach my kids. Which leads me to marriage. Am I planning on getting remarried? Do I wanna get remarried? Yes, I am definitely planning on getting remarried. I'm excited for my divorce to be finalized so that I have the freedom to do that, to get engaged, to get married when that time comes. I had the rule in my head to wait a full year of dating someone, which could include being engaged as well before I get married. I just want four seasons. I want to have a full year with someone because CJ and I got married after only six months of knowing each other and uh, a lot changed by the one year mark. CJ knows that I am planning on getting remarried at some point. And, you know, that was one of the things that I had to say to him, like, are you certain about letting me go to be with another man and having another man raise your children? Like, I have the kids full time. CJ has them every other weekend because Ireland will be in school starting next month. She'll be in kindergarten, but Xavier obviously still stays home. Like, it's not like CJ would have anywhere to put him all day. So we agreed on every other weekend. and. You know, the kids will be with me and my husband full time. And he said, yes, like he wants me to have what I deserve and he's happy for me. 
He has not said anything negative about my boyfriend. Um, he just understands that this is what he had to do. And he wants me to be happy. He doesn't want to torture himself by feeling like a horrible husband and a horrible human. He wants to be free of that guilt. And he wants me to be free to have what I want and what I deserve. So hopefully I will get remarried in a year <laughs> or more. Yes to having more kids because of the ages that my kids will be. Ireland will be six. Xavier will be three and a half next year. I definitely want to get pregnant like as soon as I get married. So I still am totally that person who believes in marriage and love and babies. But yeah, I'm doing things differently this time. After being married, you know, I feel like when CJ and I were dating and engaged, it's a, it's a fantasy. It's, it's what is it going to be like to be married? What is it going to be like to be parents and have kids? But you don't know. And now I do know. I do know what it's like to be married. I know the crap that comes up in marriage. I know what it's like to have kids and deal with parenting and, and dating someone who is coming into that. It's really easy to get a, a good idea of what life will actually look like and to deal with those arguments and the compromises you have to make and whatnot. So I feel like I really know what I'm going into this time. And also I know what to look out for. Like I'll have to make another video about all of the like red flags now that I could see looking back and all the self-reflection I've done on why I handled things the way I did in my marriage and whatnot. But because of everything I learned and experienced in my marriage with CJ, I went into dating knowing exactly what I was looking for and what I was not looking for. And I truly found the exact opposite. I found someone who is a 180 from CJ and things that are much healthier and better suited for me. I'm not going to say he's a better person than CJ again, because obviously I really did and still do love CJ in many ways, but it's just a much healthier, better fit for me as far as communication, um, being hardworking, addiction, emotional maturity, just so many things that... Are a better fit for me. So I'll talk more about that relationship with him another day. But yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm being really smart about it. He's not a rebound or anything. Um, my parents, you know, have been very worried about me, of course. Uh, when I told them the full extent of things that were going on with CJ, they basically just told me to run for the hills, stop fighting for him, stop wanting him, stop begging him. Like, Everyone was saying to me, like, why do you keep giving him chances? How many times do you need him to show you his true colors and show you that he doesn't want you? So everyone has just been very eager for me to close that door on CJ and one day find what I truly deserve. And I think I found it. So everyone's really happy for me. I'm sad and worried about my kids, obviously. I know a big question is, how are my kids adjusting to everything? I stopped fighting for someone who didn't fight for me. And luckily, someone else walked right in at that perfect time when I finally was like kind of picking myself up off the ground, you know? It wasn't that this guy came in and saved me. Like that's how I felt about CJ. I felt like CJ rescued me. CJ was my hero. I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like I saved myself and this guy can stand by my side. He's not leading me. He's not helping me. He's not protecting me or saving me. He's just by my side. But yeah, the kids are doing better now. Now that I've gotten happier and I'm doing better, they're doing better. They love my boyfriend like so much. They're so excited about him. He's so great with them. It's a really good relationship. It's a really good dynamic. We all have a really good dynamic. He just stepped right in and it's, it's so good. I know I'm going to get all sorts of judgments for dating so fast, introducing someone to my kids so fast, but I have just lived by this analogy over the past like two months of not trying to climb upstream anymore. I feel like my life was like this super fast flowing river and I was trying to like go upstream and like cl climb up and like grab onto rocks and do anything I could to like go in my direction and my path and what I wanted. And God just showed me like, life's going this way. Just let go and let it happen. And it's just happened. I haven't made anything happen. I haven't tried to make anything happen. If anything, I continued to try to go upstream and be like, but I want my husband and I want my family to stay together and I'll do anything to not have to get divorced. And I finally just had to let it happen. And the path is good so far. Hard, painful, but good. Um, as far as like the nitty gritties of divorce, uh, I'm staying in the house until I get remarried and then CJ will move back in and he's keeping the house. So we're not selling the house. The kids will be here in their 
home in their rooms every other weekend and I'll live in a new house when I get remarried. No, I don't need to get a job. CJ is still providing through child support and alimony to pay all those bills. And I have my little businesses, you know, for my money. But as far as like paying the bills and taking care of like our survival needs, CJ is taking care of us. And he's been so gracious and patient and accommodating and helpful with the divorce process and everything he's willing to give me and help out. So I'm very grateful for that. In that way, it has not been a messy divorce at all. It's been an emotional divorce, but it has not been messy. I do not plan on making a lot of like Mormon videos. There are just a couple of things that I still want to talk about as far as like the temple and things that Mormons believe that are different than Christians and comparing my beliefs then versus now. And I'm going to make some videos of me reacting to my old beliefs and my old videos. So I do still want to get out a couple things, but... I have no desire to be like an anti-Mormon channel or like bashing Mormonism. Like I'm moving on with my life. I'm just all about Jesus and the Bible and following Christ and this new relationship and this new life that I'm going to be building. So hopefully I'll be able to do some more vlogs because I know you guys really want to see like how I eat now because no, I do not have to eat meat sparingly anymore. Yes, I still eat like healthy and organic, but I definitely... um, eat ice cream now more, I guess. So I will take you guys in vlogs, like day in the life videos and show you kind of my new routine, especially as Ireland starts kindergarten and it's just me and Xavier at home, show you single mom life, my Christian life, what I believe now, but hopefully this gave you kind of a taste for those things. I just feel really free and really authentic. I feel free to look the way I want, talk, dress, act, eat, feel, believe the way I want. I feel like everything that I'm doing is about me and Jesus and progress, progressing and learning and growing, not trying to fit into some box or some mold or trying to be perfect. Sorry for the the weird lighting. Yeah, my life is really different now than it was especially a year ago. It's a lot different now than it was even two months ago. I was in a really horrible place, you guys. Very, very dark to feel completely unwanted and rejected and like given up on. It was horrible. But I learned a lot about myself, what I deserve and what I want and who I am. I've done a lot of healing. Thank goodness for therapy still. And we're okay. I'm good. I am keeping my last name as Everts until I get remarried because I'm not gonna change it back to my maiden name, then just change it again when I get married. So Foreverts is my brand. I know it's like horrible because we are not foreverts anymore. Every time I drive past the Gilbert Temple, it makes me sick to think about the promises I made in there with someone and how he did not keep them and how he gave up on it. It really sucks, but I'm trying to be grateful because what I am gaining is so good. I'm trying to focus on what I'm gaining rather than what I'm losing. I don't want to be angry and hateful. Forever is my brand. I will keep that for who knows how long. Still living in Arizona going to move to the west side, still believe in like healthy, non-toxic living and eating organic and working out and whatnot, still believe in Jesus and still go to church, still raising my kids to believe in Jesus if they do. I think that's it. I think that's the update. This is a really long video. So I hope I answered your questions. Thank you for watching and being there for me. It's been a really hard journey. There are a lot of details I haven't shared. A lot of details I have shared and then was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But you'll live and learn. So (laughs) thank you for being here and sticking by me through all the craziness that you guys have witnessed over the past five years. And I wonder what craziness is going to happen in the next five years. Okay, guys, thanks. See you later. Bye.